Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The only academy that gives you the credentials to become a certified tech and or certified inspector. All right, so on this episode, I got a special guest that's coming in. There's a lot of questions that typically come in on solar, and I know that we just started a uh, kind of a new series, but I get this opportunity um, very, uh, very few times. Actually, this is the first time. I've got Nathan Galvin with me. Is it Galvin? Galvin. Galvin. And I tell you guys, he's a solar expert. I mean, awesome stuff. One of the questions that typically come in is, is um, can you full-time uh, living off grid and sure. still travel. I know that there's off graders out there, and because of um, their needs, they have more solar panels on the ground. But I'd like to bring you on just to talk about the possibility of full timing uh, off grid, say with your solar. You've actually been doing it for two years. Yeah, three, right? uh, four. We've been living full time on our trailer for four years. We're on our third or second change up. We're adding more. Right. Each year, we typically find where consumption goes up, so we add more more batteries, more panels. So speaking of consumption, let's just give a kind of a 50,000 foot overview of your system and you know your demand. So. Sure. So we have 1200 amp hours of batteries. That's our storage. That's the device that lets us store energy between running the generator or solar panels. Uh -huh. So the amount of solar panels collects your sun, charges your batteries and you use it. If you use a lot, it takes a bigger battery bank to right. store the energy and it requires typically more solar panels to collect it to recharge. Right. You can use generator in between if you're low on sun, sun's not shining so bright. You right. can use a generator to charge up, but the, um, the bigger array, the bigger battery bank lets you go longer or use more. Right. Now for you, let me ask you, do you have to sit down and you know, kind of tabulate what you can turn on you know, and when you can turn it on? and turn off something before turn something on? That's Some systems you do. We designed a system large enough to let us turn everything on at the same time. We put a large enough inverter bank and battery bank to let me turn on everything in the trailer if I want to and turn it off kind of like we would in our, our bricks and sticks home. Right. Some systems that are smaller, maybe you have a smaller RV, they don't have as much roof space or as much battery space. You kind of have to coordinate what gets on and off at the same time. But for some folks, it's not a problem. But for you, that's, you have three air conditioners. Yep. You can run all three. I can. Can't run them all day because there's not enough battery bank, but we can certainly turn all three on at once. We need to cool the trailer down in a hurry. Right. We can run them off for an hour or two, get the place nice and cool, typically nice before bed. Right. Take the heat out of the trailer in the afternoon. At bedtime, do you run one AC or two? Um, we typically run just one, and I turn the thermostat up so it doesn't cycle all the time. The fan would be running, but we'll run one overnight. Okay. And so I get you through the night, and you've been yep. doing, like I said, for four years now. Yeah, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. have a portable generator. I'm we do. Sorry, onboard generator. Onboard generator. The system's configured to start the generator if it needs to. If for some reason we weren't paying attention to how much battery we bank we had before we went to bed, maybe as an overcast sky, the generator is set to come on as needed. You have your you have your power coming in, and we know if if that's something that you can run and recharge, then there's fewer trips. You, you have water considerations. I know you carry extra yep. water. How often um, do you have to refuel your generator? Because you got some tanks on So there. we have a 30 gallon fuel tank. Our trailer's a toy hauler. And the generator runs about a gallon an hour. So it gets me 30 hours of generator time. On a typical summer day, we run the generator for about an hour. That covers the deficit that we have with our solar panels. We're changing our solar panels up to double that up with the hope to not have to run the generator at all. So you have a 30 gallon tank. Yep. And you're running about an hour a day. So with the fuel on board, yep. you can have your stay for a month. Yeah. Without having to get fuel. Without having to get fuel. Running yeah. two in ACs, general. sometimes three ACs, sometimes one AC. Yeah, depends on our solar collection. Right. And what other things we have going on. We also have onboard laundry. Um, if I'm running the microwave every morning and breakfast, how much power you use, you have to you have to make that up somehow. Right. Well there we go. So Looking at this, guys, I know that a lot of you kind of just dabbling into it. Now, money is a consideration, you know, and, and space where you put it. Yeah. But it's absolutely uh, achievable to be able to live totally off grid and it, be able to be, you know, almost 95% living as though you're plugged into shore power. A couple things you got to consider. So that means you can go almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be up at the uh, uh, mountains, or not up in the mountains, but at the, the, you know, at the foot of the hills or whatever. Um, seashore, whatever, BLM land, harvest host, whatever there is. 
the money you spent in your system is the money you saved on where you stay. Yeah. We don't typically try to think about the fact that solar is ever going to break even in our build. It's really the freedom that it provides us. I can go to a place and not have to worry about if I'm going to be noisy to my neighbors running a generator. If I'm going to go to someplace scenic like a beach or a lake, I don't want to be that guy that has his generator running all the time. What is the trade-offs? Weight. My goodness, weight. So we added almost 2,000 pounds to our trailer with weight. The batteries, the inverters, the solar panels, which means we had to increase the weight capacity of our trailer. We added larger axles, a stronger hitch. We did all the reinforcing we needed. Gave up the Ram, got yourself a real truck. <laughs> we did have to upgrade our pickup truck since our trailer was heavier. Um, we did choose a toy hauler that already had excess capacity and we don't haul a toy. So we used some of that weight capacity for our system. Weight is a big factor uh, and space. It's space, take up space. It does take up space. We kept ours in a larger compartment so it can breathe and cool. When you are pushing the system hard, it needs to be able to stay cool, to stay efficient. When the heat rises, they become less efficient. So we did give it plenty of space to operate its own system. And if you squirrel away some of that stuff, sometimes the heat can cause the performance to degrade. We needed, we needed lots of space. So we gave up half a pass-through. Yeah, so half the pass-through. So, you know, in your considerations, it may be, you know, yeah, can you, can you see yourself? Are you getting bored staying in RV parks all the time, going somewhere? So does the freedom being able to travel almost anywhere, wherever your RV can go, but you gotta give up maybe half of your pass through. Yeah. And a little bit of weight, right? Well, some of you, that may be just too much, right? You haven't downsized enough of your storage yet to be able to do this, you know, because that comes in stages. So folks with smaller systems do get by with it. You have to watch your consumption. Instead of running two big, powerful desktop computers with monitors, maybe you're gonna get a small, lightweight, portable laptop. Instead of leaving your computer on all the time, you shut it off when you're not using it. You can be more power mindful and get away with a smaller system. Not so much when you want to run big power draw items like an air conditioner. Those those take power or dryer. If you have onboard laundry, that can really draw Two some juice. Two or three air conditioners. Right, right. Plus everything. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice just to walk, you know, don't even have to worry, but just turn it all on. Turn it all on. You can. So how long? Yeah. <laughs> can, is there a way that we can, you know, put the system together in pieces? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you can do pieces, or you can start really small by getting those little portable solar, they call them a solar generator now, where it's basically a miniature system all in one box. It has the battery, has a solar charger, and it has an inverter. You can stick it on your picnic table and plug into that. It's not integrated into your RV, but some folks, that's a good way to get into it. And I tell you, you're, you see me grimacing, you're paying for portability, and, and you're and paying size. for someone to put it together for to you. To build it. You're paying more for it. Yeah, you can DIY but it. Portable is, is really cool. Yeah. You know, so there is that bonus. Yeah, you but if you've it. never had solar and you want to know what is this all about, just a little little system might get mm -hmm. you started. And then from there, it, it can be, the sky's Batteries. the limit. You know, you can get a battery, one, yeah. uh, and small inverter, right? As long, now I would suggest get the inverter at least for your first setup, right? Don't, get, go, don't buy a 1500 watt one, and then go to a 2000 watt, then a 3000 watt, because you got to throw all those away. Yeah. Go with the inverter. If you want to run the whole house, okay, well, we can run a whole house on a 3,000 watt. I can't turn everything on, but I can basically, any one item, any one turn item. On. So one inverter, a couple of batteries, maybe no solar panels at first. A lot of folks get away without running solar. Right. They just use their battery bank to get them for a couple of days mm -hmm. to maybe between RV parks. Right. They can go from one park, spend a weekend somewhere, and then go to another park and plug back in and just operate like that. Right. Definitely, there's phases, you know, you know, start off with this because your budget only allows so much. And then you just think with lithium, like in kind, you can add another one later on, you know, year down the line just because that's the way they're built. Yeah, yeah. So you can do that. And where do you go? Well, that's obviously you go to the NRVTA, take the solar class and learn about it. Well, Nate, I appreciate you coming up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you want to be able to fix the majority of the problems on your ring, or let's say you want to open up a business, become a certified inspector or a certified RV technician, head over to our website at nrvta.com, click on programs, and get started today. There's not much problem in the summer. I mean, I sweat all over, so <laughs> this ain't going to change it too much. Now, he's got to go take care of his leg. Right. Yeah, solar panel hit him right in the back of the leg. Took me out. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Let's talk about grooming. Crooming. Crooming. All right. Ow. So. Ow? Ow.
Wow. You didn't think about that one, did you? <laughs> You're like, oh, I was going to thought you were going to say YouTube. YouTube certified. All right. YouTube certified <laughs> installer. <laughs>